another week. And here we are. Well, you are in your homes, and we're here filming a few days before Sunday. And yet, thanks to technology, we're brought together. Welcome to Pons Reformed Church and this time of worship. Please join me and Debbie in the call to worship. A borrowed donkey and a road spread with cloaks, more like deserted roads. Nevertheless, we shout, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Palm branches waving and children shouting. It may not be here, together, but the distance between us will not stop us from shouting. Let your neighbors hear you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Nothing to stop him, not even the doubters. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Tears of sadness will become tears of joy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Enemies will be defeated. Peace will reign. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in, in the, the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord. As God's people, let's join our voices together in our prayer of confession. We praise you, O God, for your redemption of the world through Jesus Christ. He entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Forgive us for those times our faith has been silent in the midst of God's work. Just as we carry these branches, may we follow Christ in the way of the cross, that, dying and rising with him, we may enter into your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we hear God's good news taken from John 3.16. If you know it, say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. 
Amen. Good morning. Hey, Widow Wendy, are you going to join us today? Yes, I am. Excellent. Do you know what today is? Um, it's Sunday. Like, you know this, Debbie. I do, and it is Sunday, but it's a special Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. What is Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday is the day when we remember that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. It's the start of our Holy Week and goes through till Easter Sunday. Oh. Wait. Like, wait. A donkey? Isn't that a bit silly? Today, yeah, riding a donkey might be a little bit silly. But back then, did you guys know kings rode donkeys? So, what was Palm Sunday about? It was about Jesus entering into Jerusalem for Passover, a very special Jewish holiday. As he entered, people waved, they waved branches, they waved coats, and they shouted things. What? They did. They did. I have an idea. Hold on a second. It might help you understand a little bit more. You guys, are you ready? Could you help show Widow Wendy what we meant by the people shouting and, and waving things? Go for it. Awesome job, you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, so they were having a parade. Exactly, a big parade for Jesus. Because Jesus brought them hope, and they wanted him to be the leader that saved them from the Romans. That's why they shouted Hosanna. It means save us. Exactly. And Jesus did come to save them and us, just not in the same way that they wanted. They wanted this military leader, but Jesus came as our eternal king, a savior who teaches us how to love God and serve others. I get it. Jesus is concerned about our heartitudes. He wants us to care for people in need and remind everyone how much God loves them. And that's why we shout Hosanna today, because Jesus is king of our hearts. Widow Wendy, that's it exactly. Jesus cares about our heartitude. Now, before we go back and read some Bible scripture, Widow Wendy, would you lead us in prayer? Sure, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for being kind and king of our hearts. Teach us to love and care for others so our heartitude is like yours. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Widow Wendy. See you guys next week. Bye. Today's scripture is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, and then chapter 14, verses 3 through 9. So beginning in verse 1. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead shouted and followed, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. 
Then he entered the temple and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And then continuing in chapter 14. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? For she has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's not much happening at stadiums across the country right now. But when sports return, it will be quite a spectacle. Imagine when a team enters the field or comes on the court or takes the ice for the first time. It will be loud. It will be extraordinary. Over the years, the entrance by the players has evolved. That moment is carefully planned and choreographed to get the crowd pumped up and the team fired up. Some entrances involve smoke machines. College football has wagons, horses, a buffalo. Hockey and basketball, they have incredible light displays. And don't forget the music. Metallica, Enter Sandman, Queen, We Will Rock You, The White Stripes, Seven Nation Army. But personally, I think the most inspiring entry music was the remix of the Alan Parsons Project for when the Chicago Bulls basketball team entered the court. That gets you fired up. Well, here today, we have Jesus and the disciples coming onto the court in Jerusalem. The disciples must be imagining the glory that is about to be unleashed upon them. James and John earlier wanted to know if they could sit at Jesus' right and left. Now they're probably wondering if they could walk beside Jesus as they enter Jerusalem on this momentous occasion. We find Jesus instructing two of the disciples to go borrow a colt. Take notice that for such an important occasion of entering Jerusalem, our gospel author spends more than half of the verses of this morning's scripture pertaining to Jesus' entrance. I mean, entrances are important, but spending half of them about a cult? Each gospel understands Jesus' entry into Jerusalem differently. And I hope you take a moment this afternoon or sometime to look at each gospel story. Here in Mark, Jesus does not enter as the king who, though glorious, is nonetheless lowly. In Mark, we see Jesus enters as the lowly one, the humble one, the servant. I've joked on Palm Sunday that I'd like to have someone riding down the center aisle on a donkey. 
Palm Sunday would be this huge production. It hasn't happened yet, and I imagine it won't. But there is a propensity with churches to create bigger productions than the actual event. What Jesus had planned was the opposite of what we often do. We act in the name of Christianity to do bigger and better because we want bigger and better. And why do we want that? For the limelight? The credit? The glory? Hmm. There are a few other disciples that want that as well. For as much as we want the grand entrance, the music blaring with deafening cheers, a donkey coming down the center aisle, and everyone to say, wow. It's easy to forget that today is not about us. It's not about bigger and better. Do you remember when we began this series on Mark? It was the first Sunday of the year. And Mark begins with the words from the prophet Isaiah. Prepare the way of the Lord. It is because the way has been prepared that the good news of God can be proclaimed. This is what Jesus came to do. To proclaim the good news of God. And here he is today entering Jerusalem to proclaim a message that will forever change the world. It is good news. It will be a message not in words, but in selfless, sacrificial actions of a humbled Jesus. We'll see it in the powerful actions of a loving God. An act of death on a cross. An act of resurrection from the tomb. And it begins here with two unnamed disciples preparing the way. We don't know who they are. I like to imagine maybe they were James and John that Jesus was getting back at them. And they were probably wondering, a cult? Why a cult? What other things should be on this list for preparing the way? Chariots, uh, a band, uh, maybe military honors, smoke machine. There was none of that. They were simply to go retrieve a colt and bring it back. And that's what they did. These disciples who kept having visions of glory for themselves, who still haven't yet figured out who this Jesus is as a Messiah, they went as commanded. There is something in this story, something to celebrate besides Jesus entering Jerusalem. It's obedience to the mundane. No glory, no excitement, yet very necessary. Each one of these mundane Activities is important in preparing the way of the Lord. Today, it's retrieving the colt so that Jesus can ride upon it into Jerusalem and continue to define the Messiah he truly is. Later in the week, two other disciples will be asked to go and secure a room where they and Jesus may celebrate the Passover meal. For as much as we are attracted to the lights, the camera, the action, the glory, the glory is for one and one only. 
We, on the other hand, are a people called to more prosaic tasks. Tasks that appear mundane. But don't make any mistake. They are very important. Tasks like building a shelf. Pulling weeds. Picking up an extra box of cereal for the food pantry. A phone call. Writing a note. Dropping an email to someone. Giving a ride. Those actions seem sort of like they're beneath the real activity. I imagine that's what they thought about the woman who poured ointment on Jesus. Some claimed she wasted it. The ointment could have been sold. The money given to the poor. Glory would come. Glory will come but not for us. This woman understood who was to receive the glory. We, on the other hand, we're preparers. We prepare the way for all to see the glory of God in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As you are about to hear in Andrew's song, people don't want us. They hope simply that we will be obedient in the small tasks, making the way for them to know Jesus. That is what this day is about, preparing the way that the world may know. Amen. Give me Jesus.
On the first Sunday of the month, we gather here at the table. Jesus Christ has invited us to His table to remember, to nourish our faith, and to hope. But the invitation is not to observe, it is to come and to do, to eat and to drink. This is a table of participation. And that is exactly what we are going to do. Those involved in the life and the ministry of Pons Reformed Church should have received an invitation by now. We invite you to click on that and join us for the appointed time in which we will gather at the table and celebrate. For those in the congregation, you have received the prayer list, and we invite you to be praying for those people, those families, and those individuals 
during this week. Please join me in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we offer to you our concern for people who are more likely than others to become severely ill from the coronavirus. We pray for the elderly and people with chronic health conditions. Protect them from harm and be their comfort in this time of uncertainty. And for many, preventative isolation from loved ones. We pray for our nurses, our doctors, our first responders, those medical health professionals. We pray that they may have the resources they need. Protect them from harm. Equip them to serve. Be their comfort in this time of uncertainty and challenge. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, whether it's been from the virus or from something else. In their grief, be their comfort. Be their peace. We offer to you, Lord, a moment of silence for our own prayer. Maybe it's a prayer for ourselves, our neighbors, our country. For those that we don't hear about, the least of these who are also threatened by this pandemic. We pray for them. Hear our prayer. Great physician, Savior, we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. These past few weeks have been hard on all of us. It seems like each day there are new challenges. But today, I want to leave you with a musical benediction from Andrew and Savannah. For as you live this week, let the words of this song resonate in your soul. Lift up your heads to the coming King. Bow before him and adore him, sing. To his majesty, let your praises be pure and holy, giving glory to the King of kings. Be well, be safe. Go with God. Amen.